see if he can finish that. Not there. Just a throw at the basket. And Cable dribbles into trouble and loses it out of bounds. It was last touched by Georgia Tech. It'll be North Carolina basketball. Joe Forte checks into the ball game, and Terrence Newby, the other senior from Siler City, goes out. Well, now we have a situation where North Carolina playing with their regular starting lineup. Forte coming off another outstanding basketball game. One of the truly top newcomers to come into college basketball this year. Cable shot won't go. Another rebound for Hayward. Had a huge rebound in the game against Maryland Saturday with 17 boards. Forte. Air ball. Interesting to see how Forte does coming off the bench. Good, nice strong ball. power move. Yeah. And Collier scores. Strong touch there by Collier on the inside because Hayward was right on him. Well, it's something I haven't seen for a while, though. Jason Floyd was screaming for the ball, wanted the ball. He hasn't done that all year, so he hit that first one. Let's see if he looks for more. Good heads move. Nice job by Collier. Comes out on the hedge and then goes back to his man. Collier, the number one rebounder in the league. Nice job. Puts it up. There was Hayward right there. Still got the shot off. That was the third turnover for the Tar Heels. Carolina's turned the ball over more than its opponents. 19 of the 28 games. Here's Floyd off balance and misses the shot. He's got the curl move right there. Well executed. Just doesn't finish inside. Yellow Jacket certainly getting the opportunities early. Lang looks like he's coming to the ball well tonight. Coda takes it himself. Here's Floyd. The numbers aren't there. And Aiken will reset. Pretty good decision by Georgia Tech. Really didn't have anything working on that semi-break. Jones from nobody out of this under, range. Nobody under. Gets it to go down. That. Yep. You have to question that shot. Collier's standing 25 feet from the basket. Nobody under. And he still takes the shot. Georgia Tech out to a 7-3 lead with 15-20 to play first half. Capel short on his shot. He was looking to pass that ball, Tim, and then at the last second put it up because nobody was open. I think he was surprised nobody came to pick him up. Collier. Now that is a sweet <laughs> jump up there. Beautiful. So Lang gets a taste of his own medicine. Georgia Tech playing very well offensively. Collier with four points. It's 9-3 Yellow Jackets. Nice. Oh. And Hayward with the high percentage jam. He really deserved that because he felt the double team coming through the ball opposite and then got in there to crash the boards. Good move by Hayward. He's a lot of very cold to start the yeah. game. With uh, basically five minutes gone, he raised his fist to come out. Floyd, another three. Floyd looks very confident. He does. This whole Georgia Tech team offensively really doing a nice job. 12 to 5, Georgia Tech. You know, they've got some wins. You know, they beat Maryland, beat Florida State, beat Virginia, beat NC State. They got win the other day, really gave them a lot of confidence. It's a much better looking team than we saw earlier in the year. Lang has his, his shot blocked. Here comes Akins. Good no look pass. This is the best I've seen Georgia Tech play all year. Fine, turns it over. Forte. Oh. All alone to Lang. Great pass by Cable. Collier's fault that time. Jones was back with Haywood. Neither one had crossed half court. Collier should have been protecting the basket. Both teams look like they're sucking wind early. They haven't really had a break. Do. Only six minutes gone by, and uh, all the big guys are looking for a rest. 12-7, Yellow Jackets. And Bobby Grimmin senses it, too. He's going to take the timeout just for the breather. So, timeout on the floor. We'll take one as well. It's Georgia Tech 12, Carolina 7. Pretty good start for the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech.
reminder, coming up on Saturday, Clemson travels to Georgia Tech for a 1 o'clock game. The Yellow Jackets looking for some revenge for that 12-point loss to Clemson. Then on Sunday at 1 o'clock, NC State heads south to Tallahassee to take on Florida State. The final weekend of the regular season. Check your local listings for your Raycom Jefferson Pilot Sports Station in your area. Look at Bobby Kremens, whose club is out to a 12-7 start here. Neither team shooting particularly well, although, as you mentioned, yeah, good start for the Yellow Jackets. Nakins really hasn't been a guy to get it hot yet, and he's been the key scorer for them of late. First miss for Floyd, and the foul by Fine. Thirteen oh seven to play in the first half. Another timeout. Georgia Tech out to the early lead, 12 to seven over North Carolina. Thirteen oh seven to play in the first half. Antoine Jamison, former great here at North Carolina, in the house here tonight. Graduate of this fine university. Came back to get that degree. Got to feel uh, very good about that young man. Set out to get a college degree, and despite all the success he's had away from college, it was very important for him to come back. And uh, he and that young man right underneath him, Jerry Stackhouse, both did the same thing, as did Michael Jordan. So uh, speaks very highly of this program to have young guys that make a commitment to education and get it. Under 13 minutes to play in the first half, it's still Georgia Tech 12-7. Here's Joe Forte. This is for three. Halfway down, comes back out. Aikens a run with it. Forte doesn't get the roll there, but it's an excellent follow-through in the shot. Had a good game at home against Maryland, but as you said, it was everything scoring-wise he wanted, except his team didn't win, and that negated all the individual effort. A lot of movement with Georgia Tech, and they're playing with confidence, as you mentioned, Billy, but here's a walk by Jones, and they turn it over. That's three turnovers for the Yellow Jackets. Well, Georgia Tech has had plenty of opportunities in close. Forte running one-handed. And Jones, nor Kanye, dropping over to help out. Jones, an excellent shot blocker, but not moving those feet to get in position to aggressively block shots. Carolina pulls within three. Nice leaner. Won't go down. Coda comes up with it. T.J. Vines in the ball game will give him a little more speed. Lang's shot is long. Man, Floyd's having a pretty good first half right here for a guy that has had some games where he's been shell-shocked this year. His teammates ought to recognize that he's got a positive attitude. Gave him the ball a little more touches. There he is again. Let's see if he tries to take his man. Coming over the back is Lang. He's called for the foul. That'll be his first. Jones gave a real good target that time for the pass. Lang never uh, closed the gap defensively. Another timeout with 11.26 to play. 12-9. Joe Forte has pulled him within three. Georgia Tech holding on to the lead with 11.26 to play in the first half. 12-9 over the Tar Heels. This being a big game for North Carolina. They got to win out, as Billy mentioned earlier. See what happened in the last meeting, Billy. 27% shooting by the Yellow Jackets. Well, as I said, Georgia Tech came out uh, with Floyd looking like he was positive and wanted the ball. They haven't gotten the Aikens going uh, strong yet, and he's coming into this ball game with 17 of his last 28 threes. Coda 0 for 1, Forte 1 for 3, Newby 0 for 1 for Carolina. North Carolina goes zone for the first time. Look for Aikens to get the ball. Carolina forces a turnover. Moore gets himself the ball over the head, doesn't take it strong against the double team, turns it over. Julius Peppers in the game for the first time for Carolina. Hayward with the turnaround. Collier made no effort defensively that time. Hayward just used him up in a low post. You're going to let him post up down that low. You've got no chance to stop him. One-point basketball game. Floyd had the shot, didn't take it. Off Carolina, Georgia Tech ball. That would have been a tough ball to catch anyway because Collier assumed. And you see, look at how low Haywood is set up. The ball goes right down to him about two and a half feet from the basket. Now, it's tough to stop a seven-footer. You're going to let him handle it in there. 
been three minutes since Georgia Tech has had a bucket. Ball's loose again. Collier misses from close range. Well, normally has a good touch in there. Here he is again. Well, now Haywood has the same thing happen to him down the other end of the floor. You've got to root those seven-footers farther away from the basket. Let them post up three feet away, and they're going to make some happen. Collier now with six points, and it's 14 to 11, Georgia Tech. Inside the Peppers, ball's loose. Good hands. Good hit ahead. T.J. Vine. To Floyd. How about yes. Floyd? See him hustle, get down the court, and score. Bill, he's always had the talent, but he looks confident tonight. You're not looking at a man that's just averaging nine points a game, and Forte can't get anything easy to happen. Peppers with the putback. He's got some good, strong hands. It gets excellent lift for a man that's carrying that much weight. He's now made 12 of his last 17 field goal attempts. Forte with good-looking jump shots. They just won't stick in there tonight. Look at those hands and that lift. Pepper's just a 56% free throw shooter, though. He's made 15 of his 27, and he makes that one from the three-point club. Well, with Brian Burstaker going to be out for the year, now uh, officially a red shirt, you can see how important the addition of Julius Peppers has been to this team. And they would really have a difficulty substitution-wise in the, in the front line if he weren't on the squad. 16-14 Yellow Jackets. You're out of there. Floyd, nice turnaround jumper. How about Floyd tonight? You can see it, Tim, when the game started. The young man looked like he wanted the ball. His feet were moving quick, unlike the hesitant attitude we've seen in the past. Billy's been averaging just nine points. He has ten already in this game. Look at him defensively, working his feet. He's come to play tonight. As you said, we've seen him have basketball games where you got to figure he's a very solid ACC player. Floyd knocked it away. He's called for the foul. That's his first. Ed Cota has not yet broken open the night. A lot of times on senior night, it's the kind of night you can have one of the great games of your career, or it's a game that your, your mind is uh, thinking about all the games in the past. Of course, the guy sitting on that North Carolina bench probably had as good a senior day as anybody in the history of this league. Phil Ford, a sensational game against Duke. Cable off balance. Nothing there. And the block ball. It's hard to believe, though. Here's a team, Carolina, that averages 71 points a game, and with 8.32 to play in the first half, they only have 14. If you look at Phil Ford. Well, one of the things, Tim, about North Carolina that has been very obvious this year, they don't make something happen with their defense. Uh, we saw a great game last weekend, the St. John's Duke game. Both of those teams made things happen with their defense. And so that every point didn't have to be scored in a half-court set. North Carolina just does not create that type of tempo with their defense. And so, subsequently, unless they're just beating you with great field goal shooting percentage, which they are best in the United States in the half-court set, they're just not going to take it. As Carolina brings in four new substitutes, their blue team. Now let's see now if this team will put some pressure on to try to get some tempo going with defense. Well, you talk about that defense. You make a great point about St. John's Duke. You think about the University of Maryland's won 10 of their last 11 in conference with well, defense. That's exactly it. It is very difficult. You've got to have some kind of execution to beat people just with half-court sets. 18-16, Georgia Tech. The blue team now in for Carolina. See if there's patience to get the ball to Collier. Good job. Collier was fouled. Good job by Georgia Tech. Should really take advantage of this blue team. You know, when the blue team was instituted by Dean Smith, people forget that, last, that group of kids from 10 to 15 back in those days were players. I mean, they would be starting for most of the ACC team, Good point. even at those days. So when they came out at you, they were guys that could play that were really looking for the opportunity. We're talking about now roughly JV kids. And so if you're a starting player and you see this big blue team come in, you ought to feast on them and send them right back to the bench as fast as they came out. Hey, speaking of JV, we saw a terrific game earlier tonight. Fourth Union beat North Carolina JV by a point at the buzzer in overtime. And why not press them? No pressure. 
pressure on the ball so far. Here's Holmes to Melendez. He'll fire for three. Great hustle by five. Collier ahead to T.J. Vine. Let Collier touch the ball again. If he's playing against a guy that can't handle it. Jones, Jones finally finishes. Good move by Georgia Tech. Take advantage of this. 22-16 Yellow Jackets. And there they come. The other guys are coming right back in there. You know, you don't let a team get by with this. And just think about it. Carolina started three guys, or two guys tonight that normally are not in that starting lineup. Then they come in with this team, and they've lost their momentum. Melendez turns it over to Moore. Don't like this business. Georgia Tech has hit its last five field goals in a row. 7-10 to play in the first half. And it's 24-16 Georgia Tech. For a chance to win $1 million at the half court line, don't miss the Bank of America Home Equity Million Dollar Dream Shot. For complete rules, visit bankofamerica.com slash sports. No purchase or transaction necessary. Bank of America, equal housing lender. You know, they're getting a little antsy here at the Dean Dome. This is not a usual season for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. They're just 17 of 11, 8 and 6 in the conference, and trailing here 24 to 16. Bobby's got to like the way his team's uh, performing so far tonight, and I think North Carolina with their substitution pattern has helped them. Trapping D by Georgia Tech. Good job. Ed Cota normally very good at breaking it. Does a nice job there. Oh. Cota fills the lane, and he's fouled by T.J. Vines. You know, and, and Tim, we've seen this team play a lot. When North Carolina plays well, whether it's in a victory or a defeat, Ed Cota's taken the ball down into the paint aggressively. So far tonight, he hasn't done it hardly at all. 24-16, Tech. Georgia Tech with its largest lead of the night, 24 to 16 with 6.53 to play. Collier, three of five, Billy, from the floor. Well, great recognition by the Georgia Tech teammates. They realized, particularly when that big blue team came in there, that Collier was being played by a guy that couldn't handle him, and they've gone down inside to him, and he's handled it extremely well. Eight points, one rebound for Collier, who's out to that quick start. Jason Floyd also out to a quick start tonight with 6.53 to play in the first half. Surprise, surprise. It's Georgia Tech in the lead. Now, Ed Cota has got to recognize what's happening to his ball club and take that ball in his hands and start penetrating. Because this Georgia Tech team, particularly with the way Floyd was playing, is gaining a lot of confidence right here. A real testimony to, to Bobby Crimmins and how he's held this team together even after he stepped down. Coda one of played better. Coda one of the all-time assist leaders. Billy doesn't have an assist yet. Well, it, it, you can just watch the way the game is being played. There's an example. Fine had Vines wide open on the other side and couldn't get it to him. Forte banks it in. Ball bounced right off the face of Tony Akins. Well, there was a case, too, where Jones standing so far away from the basket, not where he should be in position to touch it. Five in a row. We'll see if they hit it here. That four-tape basket stops a 10-2 run. Fine has a look and loses the handle. Collier didn't go after the ball. Great hustle by Forte. Forte. And again, Forte. This is just a matter now. North Carolina picking up the hustle. Cuts the lead to four. Forte has six. North Carolina picking up their defensive intensity. And they're on their feet in the Dean Dome. Collier loses it. And again, it's Forte. Great anticipation by Joseph Forte. Realizing Collier's going to want to post up down there and occupy the ball. Hayward with a turnaround jumper. Yes! Here come the Tar Heels. Just a difference in intensity over a period of two minutes. North Carolina gets the regular starters back out there and go after it. Carolina has not led since the first basket of the game. 
but they've cut the lead to two with 5-11 to play in the first half. Joseph Forte makes the steal, takes it the length of the floor from that point on, follows up his own shot. Great hustle on his part. Haywood recognizes the double team but puts up the shot. He had Lang wide open underneath the basket, as you can see right there, but hits a shot anyway. What a difference Joseph Forte has made the last two minutes of this ball game. A couple of loose balls, a couple of buckets. Well, he's for the third time as one ACC Rookie of the Week. As I mentioned, his 26 points against Maryland. And you can tell this kid's a winner. The losing of the, of the team game was more important to him than the 26 points he had back in his home territory. Still, the scoring he's done this year has been amazing. He's led North Carolina in scoring all year. It's never been done here that a freshman is the leading scorer. Nathan's looking to get it now. Nobody on, Coda. Somebody's got to be free. Great pass. And a foul on Jones. Aikens fell down, so that made it a five-on-four game. And that was probably a pretty good foul that time coming across by Jones because Lang had an easy dunk. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom Jefferson Pilot Sports and the ACC is prohibited. You know, you mentioned about Forte being the first freshman ever to lead this uh, team in scoring. Uh, Adam Harrington last year led NC State. It was the first time it ever happened at NC State. So two storied programs in back-to-back -back years could have that happen. Of course, Harrington transferred to Auburn. And uh, so we'll never know what he could have done after. But these are certainly different times, too. Oh, yeah. You have so many of the older guys moving on and leaving early. And, of course, before that, the older times never got to play as freshmen because they had freshmen exactly. teams. Exactly. So the Billy Cunninghams, Lenny Rosenbluth, that, that era of player uh, obviously was on a freshman squad. Collier with a little jump hook, you're short. There's Floyd. Floyd who's had a nice first half, gets it back to Vine. Beautiful. And Jones not ready for the catch. Here comes Forte again. Steps. Called the foul first. Yeah, he walked before he got fouled. You see Forte going in here. There's a walk, then he gets hit. So the foul took place after the violation, but the foul will be the call. Forte really doing a job turning this game around. No question about that. Six steals, that's a career high. The foul was on T.J. Bynes. And remember, he did not start in this ball game. Sat out for a while because Newby was the starter at his position. I mentioned Maryland has won 10 of its last 11 ACC games. You've got about eight minutes left in that game, and Maryland leading Florida State. Duke has already beaten Clemson today. So Clemson now goes to 4 and 11 in the conference. And Georgia Tech at 4 and 10, trying to stay away from that last place game. And in that streak, Tim, we had that Maryland Duke game, and that was no fluke. I mean, they played Duke a fine game that night and just beat them, outplayed them. Billy, really, that was one of the best games played at the highest level by both teams that I've seen in a long time. Here's Fine with a three pointer. Good pass out by Jones on that play. Georgia Tech playing very well on the offensive end of the floor. They go back in the zone now. 27 26, Georgia Tech. Owens reverse layup. Jones with a big rebound. Got inside Peppers that time. Good hustle. He's got five rebounds. Fine again. Beyond the arc. Yes! Wide open shot. Good ahead. Hit ahead by Vines. Bobby Crimmins has a nice feel as to how he's playing his guys here tonight. They stay back in that zone. Forte, Yellow. a good outside shooter. Yellow Jackets have led most of the first half. Cota not looking for the shot. Wide open. Haywood is short. Floyd with another rebound. Tech playing well. Owens does a good job realizing Fine was setting up for that jump shot. It's going to be a foul against Collier underneath. I think it's going to be Peppers that pushed Collier, allowing Haywood to have a, a good, clean rebound. Good call, Billy. You're right. 
2.49 to play in the first half. We'll return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference, five for three. Our Jeep game summary looks like this. Collier and Floyd having a big first half. Six steals by Forte is what really turned this game around for North Carolina to get back in it. I mean, they, they were in a position there, not scoring with their offense. Georgia Tech getting uh, very confident. So Forte came in and turned that ball over. Georgia Tech has led but all but 12 seconds of this first half, mainly because they've hit four of their seven beyond the arc. Here's another steal. This is about the Peppers. Nation. Great anticipation by Peppers. He came all the way from the weak side, saw that play, and took advantage of it. Carolina pulls within two. Little half-court trap now. Five for three. Lloyd almost had a good offensive rebound. Dota just won't pull the trigger. Yep, and he won't penetrate either. I don't understand it. Hard to imagine. Well, the check showed a little zone. Now they're back to their man-to-man. -man. Shot clock at 10. Forte recognizes that, takes it to the bucket, comes up short, but gets a rebound. Oh, he hustles and follows his shot. Peppers. Oh, how about that one? This guy never ceases to amaze me. Seven points for Peppers. I'm not going to put him in Charles Barkley's class, obviously, as a basketball player. But I'll tell you what, this guy has got quick feet, and he can get that 250 or 60 pounds off the ground. Floyd wanted it back. Jones instead throws up a terrible shot. He is not going to finish inside. And he, and he never gets double teamed. So, I mean, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, but he just doesn't finish off the shots. Floyd throws, showing a little frustration, was shaking his head. He wanted it back. And we're tied at 30. You know, as much as this basketball by Peppers has helped the North Carolina basketball team, Jim, you were an outstanding football player. This has really got to help his footwork and foot. No question but about it. I mean, this kid's going to be something on that, on that field. Here we see the anticipation. Peppers takes it inside, goes up and under. I mean, just the flexibility that this is developing for him. You know, I understand your point when you say you're not going to put him in Barkley's class. But, I, you know, until you said that, I, I didn't even see that there is a, a, a resemblance yeah, in body style and right. the way they play. And, and the way they can quickly get off the floor and elevate and take all that weight with them. But Charles Barkley was a basketball player, not a football player trying to play basketball. And, uh, so there was a, obviously a major difference there, but uh, Peppers does some amazing things as an athlete. 32 seconds to play in the half. We're tied at 30. Collier, tough turnaround, but he hits it. Boy, he's got a nice touch around the basket. Really he really does. He's got the touch from range. He can turn around, jump shots, got the half hook. Collier in double figures, Floyd in double figures, Georgia Tech with a two-point lead, we're down to 10 seconds in the half. I think they should have stayed in the zone right now because you got Coda in a low 1-4, pretty, he's usually pretty effective in this. Three seconds, one second, boy that's not great nope. block use there. Nope. The end of the first half, and how about this? Georgia Tech leading North Carolina 32 to 30. We'll be back with our halftime activities right after this. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Amico, by Chick-fil-A, by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers, by Aquafina, and by Geico Direct. All set to start the second half. Georgia Tech 32, North Carolina 30. See if the Tar Heels can take it up a little bit, Billy. And if Georgia Tech can continue a solid play, they played with a lot of confidence in that first half. They start off in the zone. Played both man and zone in the first half. Carolina has it first. This is Coda. 
Forte for three. Big rebound by Capel. And a foul out front. So let's take a look at the Buick keys of the game to start the second half. Well, if you're Georgia Tech, you had a very good, solid first half performance, but to win a game, you got to play all 40 minutes. And for Ed Cota, uh, just a, a very, very poor first half performance in his part. No points. Only took two shots, one assist, one turnover, and lacked really the drive to get that ball down inside the paint. And it always spells trouble for North Carolina when he's not putting on the floor and penetrating inside. There he goes. Something good usually happens when he puts the ball on the floor and gets it in the paint. And for Forte, it's all been good. We're tied at 32. You know, you almost with Coda, and, and we're talking about a guy that's the third all-time assist man in the history of the ACC, fourth in the history of the nation. You almost think that the, you'd say to Coda, if you don't drive the ball in the paint, you're going to sit down. You know, like when you, yeah, see just guy, force him to you do take it. another bad shot, you're sitting down. Well, in this particular case, if you don't put the ball on the floor and get in the paint, you're going to sit on the bench. There's Floyd again, gets the roll. Having a solid game. Because when Coda puts the ball down in the paint, North Carolina is effective. Here he picks up his dribble. It becomes easy to guard when he just stands out there, puts the ball over his head, picks up a dribble. Boy, Joseph Forte moves. Never stops. Shot clock down to 12. Half hook. Forte with a tip. Boy, Forte's getting his hands on a lot of balls, isn't he? He is all over the place. Bad pass. Picked off by Capel. Well, it was a good idea, but because of his size, he couldn't see where he was trying to throw the ball. Offensive against Lang, or no, they call it on Jones. Jones put that forearm right in Lang's back. Easy call to make. That's two on Alvin Jones. And we're tied. North Carolina stays in there man to man. You got to figure it's, it's Collier's time to touch that ball and get down in low on Lang. Five from way outside. Very tough shot. He's so much better when he shoots without the dribble, standing straight on. Here's Coda. Yes. Well, he was one step outside the paint. Carolina leads for only the third time tonight. So on three possessions, he put the ball on the floor, took it into the paint. And took his little jump shot right outside the paint. North Carolina scores on two of them. Floyd is fouled. Three seconds on Jones standing there, not paying attention. Whoa. 17-27 to play. It's Carolina by two. Danger time now for Georgia Tech. They played well up to this point. They're a losing type team. Let's see if they can keep their initiative. Here's Forte for three. Great idea by Hayward. Sends the double team. No rotation by Georgia Tech. Hits it out to a man that's got the great stroke. That's his first jumper tonight. But you know, every time he shot the ball, it looked like it had a good shot going in. Absolutely no offensive movement now by Georgia Tech. They don't look like the team we saw in the first half. Here's Floyd. Kind of a flat shot. North Carolina can get running here. His team sometimes, because of this record, will accept the feat. An 11-2 run by North Carolina. 16-40 to play in the ballgame. 41-34 will return after this message from the ACC. Here we're going to see the play inside, hitting a side. Now, what Haywood did is realize that he was being double teamed and threw the ball opposite. Georgia Tech got no rotation over there. Did a good shooter, so consequently, Forte is wide open. North Carolina goes off. See the Tar Heel scoring run. They have the feeling Georgia Tech's on the ropes. Without question. And lazy pass. Turn it over. Jones has not played well tonight. Here's Pepper. Whoa! Good follow-through. 
through by Peppers, ran on the break. Coda now starting to push the ball a little bit. Julius Peppers. for three. That, oh, that's, he was on the line. That's a two. That was a mistake by Forte that time. Jones doesn't need to be double teamed. He's proven he can't finish. Don't go double team and allow a man to be wide open on the outside. Push by Capel. 15-33 to play. Carolina 43, Georgia Tech 36. How about the play by Peppers? Wow. Well, this place is rocking right now. Carolina has exploded 43-36. And at the broadcast booth, well, our team has been elevated somewhat by Antoine Jameson, one of the all-time greats here in Chapel Hill. What an honor for you tonight, huh? Yeah, it's very special. Uh, you know, all the things I accomplished here at Carolina and the have my jersey up there with the rest of us guys. That's a very uh, special feeling for me. You know what Billy and I were talking about earlier, though, was the most impressive thing to us is the way you came back and got your degree. Yeah, that was very important. Uh, There's a lot of stereotypes about athletes, you know, leaving school early and not coming back. And, uh, you know, when me and Stackhouse graduated, it shows you that guys really care about their future. Well, I'll tell you, that is a tough thing to do, especially when you're making a lot of money, you're up <laughs> there at that next level, you're playing ball every night, which you love to do, to come back to school is difficult. Oh, yeah. 15.05 to play here at the Dean Dome, 43-36. Carolina leading Georgia Tech. Antoine, let me ask you a question. When you were practicing here as a freshman, did you ever look up there and see some of those jerseys and the history that preceded you? Look at those think names. About yeah, someday I, I'd be up there. I came in with, uh, you know, Vince Carter and Adam Ola. And, uh, as freshmen, we did, so we wanted to have our numbers, up, our names up there. And, uh, you know, I'm the first to have them up there. I know Vince is going to have his up there, and I, will, I know Adam wish he was up there. But I remember coming in as a freshman and saying, one day I'm going to have my name up there. Well, now that you're analyzing the game, i got to ask you a question. And I made a ridiculous comment, and I'm not comparing them now. I don't want you to think I'm crazy. Julius Peppers, Charles Barkley. Yeah. Uh, did you see it? Uh, he has special talent. I mean, for a guy to be able to play football and come out here and uh, be able to play basketball, and uh, he's just so versatile, and he's a, a tremendous athlete. I mean, the guy can really play. He's I built mean, like Charles was in college. I think he's bigger than Charles. Yeah. I mean, the guy is uh, just huge, and uh, he's really helped out Carolina a lot this year, and uh, he's a special part of the team. Well, he's also, now that he's been out here, he's playing with a lot more confidence than he was when he first started yeah, after yeah. football season. It, it just have to get used to it, and like you said, he came after the football season, and his body's used to the football, and uh, just getting used to the basketball, and, uh, you know, basketball and things like that. I mean, it probably took a, a little time for him to adjust to it. I noticed you're over there with Coach Smith. How often do you get uh, an opportunity to talk to him? I talk to Coach Smith at least once a week. And, uh, Is that right? Yeah, he's, uh, like I say, he's almost like my second father. And uh, that lets you know how important he is. He still, you know, call me and uh, see how my family's doing when I'm out after I left Carolina. And uh, he's still a, a big part of my life and really means a lot to me. Akins with a three-pointer makes it a 44-39 ball game, 14-22 to play. Antoine, best of luck to you coming back from the injury. It's uh -huh. great to see you. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you very much. Class act. Oh, yeah. Great to see you again. You. Miss on the inside by Capel. Game starting to pick up some intensity, Tim. Oh, a crossover dribble by Vines. Out to find. This is for three. Last touch by Collier, or was it? Yes. You know, fine, Timmy, when you take in consideration he had one game where he was sick and didn't score, he's working on six of his last seven games in double figures. So these jump shots he's making are something that's been standard fare for him at Georgia Tech. Even though they had that 11-2 run, Georgia Tech is still hanging within five. Here's a soft shot by Haywood. That'll help. When he touches it, he scores. His problem has been the number of touches and the lack of offensive production by the fact that he, you know, he's had four games this year where he's been seven for seven. You'd almost like to see him be seven for 17, making it so much more difficult to guard. Who's that call gonna be on? Well, they've been bumping and grinding down low. I believe they're gonna call it on Collier. Yeah, they do. That's his first. 
Trying to get position down on the inside. The two big men going after each other. Often they'll call it on the second push. The first guy takes the link and doesn't get it. Coda kicks it out. Capel has a look. This is for two. Yes. Something happens good every time Ed Coda gets the ball down inside in the paint. Seven for Capel. 13.05 to play. Carolina with its largest lead. Been a surprising game. Georgia Tech led most of the first half, led it at halftime. This foul will be on Forte. Tim, at the top of the show, you said, how important is this game for North Carolina? You know, they've got to go one more place before the ACC tournament and play at Duke. So this is game was absolutely critical, and they're starting to show now here in the second half that they can get the momentum necessary to go over in Durham and play a fine game. Well, it was critical for both. Georgia Tech certainly wanted to come in and grab an upset because Clemson's already lost. They don't want to be at the bottom of the conference standings. This is for three by Aikens. And Georgia Tech keeps hanging around. Can go over the top of Moore inside. Lang's got a lot of size on him. There it is. Great pass into Lang. And he's recognition by Coda. That was definitely there the minute they set up inside. Moore is trying to play in front of him, but uh, Lang is just too tall for him. Two quick ones on yep. Collier. So Lang goes to the line. He's a 65% free throw shooter. He's hit 45 of his 89 free throws this year. Somewhat hindered this year, as everybody knows, by injuries. But he's he's worked his way through pain, playing with some pain. Had a solid season, but I expected him to have a much bigger season. And I think before he's finished at North Carolina, he's going to be one of the premier power forwards in the country. Now hit 46 of his 70 and hits again. Rolls that one in. He's four for four at the line. Collier playing way out front. And again, Georgia Tech turns it over. Lions telegraphed the pass. Coda too experienced for that. Boy, Collier's going to pick up another one in a second. Three quick ones on Collier. And, and what Collier is not doing, he, he knows that the referees are going to be looking at it. You've got Lang posted up strong. He needs to back off for a second. I mean, this is crazy to fight a man at that position. No, no entry pass was even on the way. He's just given up two easy fouls. It puts his team in real jeopardy if he's not on the floor. At 3,108. And Lang's, getting them quickly. Do, Lang's doing the right thing. Lang should get really active here. Fine with the rebound. Georgia Tech needs to score badly, Billy. And North Carolina should have gone back to Lang on the inside, picked up a fourth foul on him. Really tough shot by Fine. Not a good shot. Oh, Lang lost, lost the handle on the way up. But look at what Coda did. Took the ball into the lane, made an easy play. Carolina by eight. This foul will be called on Brendan Haywood. Those two guys are really going after. And that was a pretty good acting job by Collier that time. Eleven thirty-eight to play. Timeout on the floor. Eight-point ball game. This is an emotional night for both clubs for a lot of reasons. Everybody's getting excited for the 47th ACC tournament. It's just eight days away now. The emotion, the intensity, all the great plays in a four-day war coming straight at you. So plan on joining us for the tournament starting next Thursday at 9 o'clock for the first round action. First game will feature Duke in the number nine seed, which has yet to be set. And that will be just the beginning as we take you the rest of the way. Check your local listings. But first, this weekend, before the season has ended, Clemson takes on Georgia Tech, and that could be for that number nine place. Well, Florida State and NC State get an opportunity to jockey for positions as well. That'll be on Sunday, so check your local listings on the Raycom Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. That's going to pack it back in the 2-3 zone now. That's a great job by North Carolina not to get in the double-team situation with Jones. Let Haywood play him by himself, taking away any passing opportunities. Great battle down on the floor. Possession arrow belongs to Georgia Tech.
Boy, things have turned around rapidly for Carolina. Well, North Carolina shooting over 50% on the year, so you don't expect them to stay down in that 39 percentile very long. When you, you consider this team shooting over 50%, considering the schedule that they've played, their, their opponents outside the league have been outstanding. That's uh, very good efficiency in a half court. North Carolina was heavily favored coming into this ball game. Georgia Tech has struggled this year, just 4-10 in the conference. And yet it was Georgia Tech leading the entire first half, and now down by eight, still hanging around. Akins again, kind of glided to his right on that jump shot for a lefty. How about those hands? Peppers! Wow. You know, Coda recognizing that Peppers has the great hands made a tough ball to catch. To somebody, that might not have been a good pass, but the Peppers, it was excellent. Hot Peppers now, he's got 11 points. Well, the first game we did this year uh, with North Carolina, he was the player of the game for television, and he's continued to progress right on through like that. Look how strong he is. Look at the hands. Yeah, just, he didn't even realize somebody was in his way. Did you see how Jamison lit up when you mentioned uh, Peppers? Well, you know, I, as I said, I don't want to be a fool talking about a young guy that's playing basketball for the first time against the Hall of Famer. But on the other hand, the comparisons physically are very interesting. Kyle, you really has a nice touch, makes it a 52-44 ball game. I did Auburn this past week, and looking at some of their history, he led, uh, I'm talking about Barkley now, led Auburn in rebound and, and the SEC in rebounding all three years he played. Here's Peppers with the right hand. But you know, he never scored over 16 points a game as a college player. Everybody always kids about Dean Smith, the only guy able to hold Michael Jordan under 20. Well, how about Auburn held Charles Barkley down under 16? Shot clock at 15. Collier from way outside. North Carolina now in control of this basketball game. The next couple of possessions really key. They can blow this game wide open. Joseph Forte over to Peppers. Here comes Cota back to the ball, a smart thing to do. Whistle and a foul. This will be against Georgia Tech. But there, there's something, Tim, that in watching North Carolina, when you're really trying to dissect them, Cota came out and got the ball. He's being guarded at the top of the key. What did he do with the ball? Just gave it right back. He gave it back to Peppers. Now, Peppers is not going to be the guy to make the right. play. Coda would be the guy with the ball in his hands. You've used up half of your shot clock. He should never throw the ball to Peppers. Put it on the floor and let him be the guy that makes the play. Surprisingly, sometimes he becomes easy to guard when he does that. Peppers missed the free throw. Georgia Tech needs a basket badly. Nice pass by Moore inside to Jones, and he's fouled. Jones not ready to catch and put it away, so he goes to the foul line. Well, they're actually not even getting to the foul line now if they're not there yet. Billy, that's three on Haywood. Still have 9.19 to play. Now, what you have in Georgia Tech, they've got three pretty good perimeter shooters on the floor right now. And there's one of them right here. Oh. Wide open. Floyd couldn't convert. That was still pretty good execution. Nice pass to Campbell for the easy bucket. Ten-point North Carolina lead. Now there it goes to show you've got the wide open three from a guy you want shooting. If you don't get your three, they come down and get their two. Things from an opportunity for you to tighten up the game to them going ahead and extend the lead. Fine hits a three-pointer. They got three good shooters on the floor right now. 54-47. Tech won't go away. He's fouled. Haywood would not be denied that time. Jones just let him get closer and closer to the basket. He has 11. We'll go to the line to try to get 12. It's a nice move here by Haywood. Little drop step. Holds his pivot foot in place and then gets the nice kind roll. 
You like to walk before the final move, huh? I thought he moved those pivot feet. Well, maybe he didn't tell the referee which one it, it was his pivot. He was just thinking about it. <laughs> they gave him the pitter patter. <laughs> Looked like he was tap dancing on a light bulb. Back up to a 10-point lead. After Georgia Tech, you cannot be satisfied with trading baskets. Oh, how about that crossover dribble? Where did wow! He Where did he go? Aikens with a sweet bucket. Dakota taking a rest, and Holmes had no idea where Aikens went on that play. Eight-point lead for Carolina. He was Sherlock Holmes, but not a detective. Last touch by Jones, Carolina ball, 20 on the shot clock. 7.57 to play, 57-49, Carolina leading Georgia Tech. We'll be back right after these messages. North Carolina leading by eight, 7.57 to play. Talked about Antoine Jameson being here. Here's a look at Roy Williams, who's in the house tonight, head coach at Kansas. Now, another class act, and you know why he's here? His daughter's a cheerleader, and he and his wife came to see her cheerleading their last game. I mean, Roy is, is one fine family guy. I, I remember, what was it, last year he came to see his son play, remember? And his son twisted his ankle. Just as Roy and I were walking in the gym, son was going to play in a JV game, twisted his ankle on the first play, and Roy came all the way from Kansas. <laughs> Didn't get a chance to see him play. But I'll tell you, there are a lot of fathers that would like to be as loyal to their kids as he is. You're exactly right. I think his son now is in banking, and his daughter, Kimberly, here, as you mentioned, is a sophomore. Offensive goaltending. Pepper's up there on the glass again, but he gets called. 7.39 to play, and Georgia Tech still hanging around and hanging close. You can see the ball on the cylinder, but he was up there. Those quick feet again up there in the air. Another couple of inches, and that ball would have been out of the cylinder. Bobby Kremen's on his feet now. He's been in his seat for most of the ball game, and now he's up asking for some motion, trying to get his team to rally. Collier. Nice. Good job by Capel keeping that ball alive for his team. Lang runs the court well. Here come the Tar Heels. Lang with that jump hook. Not even close. Fine with a rebound. Ahead they go to Akins. A little small to finish on the inside. Good hustle back by Coda. You know, they ought to throw that ball to Collier inside because the referees have been calling all the fouls down inside on the defense. So you might as well take him, take him, because right now, see how Peppers is pushing on him? There's going to be the foul on the defense. Good call, and, coach. Yeah, I mean, if that's the tendency of the referees, do it. Take advantage of the way they're calling the game. Our nationwide ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week is forward John Babel of Georgia Tech. He's injured tonight. The junior from North Attleboro, Massachusetts, has a 3-0 grade point average, majoring in management. So congratulations to John, our ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week. Got that quad strain. Tried to come back a little bit too early, I yeah, think. I think. Just didn't give it time absolutely. to heal. Good, solid defensive player with uh, a lot of experience. Georgia Tech going back to the two big guys. Now, if you're North Carolina, you've got a guy in the line right now that can hurt you. You go down the other end of the floor, again, knowing how the referees are calling the low post play, try to set somebody up who he's guarding and, and keep getting that ball into him and pick up that fourth foul on Collier. You want him out of the ball game if you're North Carolina. And if you're Georgia Tech, you've got to figure out a way to protect him. His free throw motion is just about flawless. Makes them both. Now, let's see. He's picking up Lang. North Carolina ought to go to Lang and make that referee make the same call. Forte has it go down and comes back out. Collier with the rebound, and here come the Yellow Jackets. Well, what I like about Forte's offensive game, he's got the perimeter shot. He can take it to the hole, and he pulled up. Even though he didn't make that shot, it was a good pull-up jump. Oh, is blocked by Forte. Wow. This young man is a fine all-around player. He gives it to you every night. Plays with a lot of maturity. Obviously well-coached. Played for Morgan Wooten at the Matho. What a great program Morgan has had there and continues to have there. Here's Porte beyond the York. Not getting the roll tonight on his jump shot, but he's getting good looks. Ah. 
not even close. Jones going away from the bucket. But you notice now, and if, if you're Georgia Tech, you got to figure out something to do with this guy because teams are playing him just one on one. He's no threat offensively. And he throws it away. And, and, and then throws the ball away, right? Well, I think right now I would continue to go to Collier, as you mentioned Absolutely. and pointed out. You know, sometimes there's tendencies to referees to allow more hand checking out front. Sometimes they allow no hand checking inside. But you see how they're going to call it. There he is down in the lane, and something good will happen. Jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to North Carolina, so they'll get it with the ball stuck on the rim. Still up there. Real good penetration by Coda. That's the end, Coda. That's up there among the nation's leaders in the assist man. North Carolina has missed its last five shots. And allowing Georgia Tech to hang in. Turnaround jumper. That was partially touched. Here's Vines. They don't have the numbers, but he's got the shot. Palming the ball outside. But Aikens not called by the official. Moore, Collier, beyond the arc. Yes! Big three. I said they're letting them hang around in this game. Three-point game. He has 17 points, and it's 57-54. Give Bobby Crimmins a lot of credit. He's taken a team that got used to losing, and they are now playing their best basketball of the season here down the stretch with really nothing whatsoever to gain. 8 of 19, beyond the arc. Lang with a jump hook, gets the roll. Real nice shot. Boy, he's got a soft touch on that shot, doesn't he? Billy, you talk about Bobby Kremens and his 19 years at Tech. People forget that Georgia Tech was 4-23 and 23 when he took over that program. Now he's a third winning as coach in the history of this league. And there's Collier again. I did the last game by Dwayne Morrison that he coached down there. It was Wake Forest against Georgia Tech. Last game on ACC television. There were about 350 people in the stands. And just think of how that program turned around to be one of the prominent programs in the country. Now they're back in this game. Just down by two and with the ball. Good rebound. Now Jones walking again. He needs to get down in low and get some rebounds. Akins has it around the rim, comes back out, and Hayward has the rebound. Where was Jones? 20 feet from the basket. He needs to be down inside, getting ready to board. 3.45 to play. You mentioned Bobby Crimmins up off his chair. I'll tell you guys off his chair right now, Phil Ford. Good block out by Collier. Oh, and Jones just slams his head against the floor. He and Lang really collided. Wow. Watch this, Billy. They really collide here. Kyle, you're banging in there. Watch his head on the floor. Yep. It's like a boxer that goes down sometimes, gets that snap. Boy, he got hit. But he's got to go to the line. Been to the line 165 times this year. Shooting 61%. Four points, ten rebounds. Collier tonight, six of six at the line. The rest of the team, zero for zero. He ought to shoot that ball. North Carolina's in the lane too soon, but he hits it anyway. He would have got a free shot on that one. Pretty good concentration there. Yeah. Well, that's like the quarterback. The team's offsides. Go ahead, go through the play. Makes them both. He's only a 61% free throw shooter, but he makes it a one-point game. It's 59-59. He makes it a tie ball game with 335 to play. Georgia Tech's fired up. Tied at 59 with 335 to play. North Carolina with only seven points over the last seven minutes. Look at the standings now. Duke did beat Clemson tonight. Georgia Tech trying to steal one here, so they will not be tied with Clemson last place. And Maryland got a win tonight. They go to 11 and 4. So you've got one and two set for the tournament. That's about all, right? That's it. North Carolina 
has been beaten by Bobby Crimmins in this in this arena in 91, 94, and 96. Nice pass there to Peppers. And they're going to call a foul on Collier. His fourth. A set play. Coda puts the ball in the lane on the dribble and makes something happen. Watch Coda. When he's in the paint, North Carolina is effective. Peppers goes right over the top. Actually, almost leapfrogged over Collier. And he makes the three-point play. Huge play by North Carolina. Now let's see if Georgia Tech can answer with this outside shooting of theirs. Aiken's on the bench right now. That's kind of surprising. Pepper's on Collier, and he's riding him hard. And Collier also has to be at, uh, uh, very uh, careful now, however. He's got four fouls on him. Aiken's on the bench. I think this really hurts Georgia Tech now because Vine's nowhere near the shooter he is. Shot clock at five. Jones keeps it alive. Fine gets the rebound. Fine is fouled by Lang. No, who got it? Capel. I think it's Capel on the inside. Great follow on the shot. As a three-point shooter, you've got the good views as to which way your shot is going to go. He did a good job following up. That's three on Capel. So Fine goes to the line, and Sean Fine is a 68% free throw shooter. Boy, nice rotation. Yeah, he was known as a shooter. He's also a nice passer. Was sick in that game against Florida State, but played anyway. He's having a nice season. You know, the guy that recommended him to Georgia Tech, Stephen Marbury. He ought to know whether a guy can play guard position or not. Pretty good player. Now, this is a good move by Bobby Crimmins. He's back with Aikens, so he's got his offense on the floor. Can Coda create his own offense? Wow. Wow. All night long, he hadn't looked for a shot. It's a one-point game. Georgia Tech has the ball. Two and a half minutes to play. Bobby Crimmins really working on that sideline. Oh, that's a smart play by Jones. Ball still loose, and Hayward comes up with it. He knew it was an offensive goal, and if he touched it, so he stayed away from it. Joseph Forte is fouled by Clarence Moore. A tough matchup for Moore there. Forte so much quicker than he is. Three on Moore. It's down the other end. I, I really thought Jones had not been on his case a little bit tonight, but he was in an excellent position to rebound, realized when that ball hit the rim, if he touched it at all, he'd get the call, so he just kept his hand off it. This young man started the season as the MVP in Maui, and, and really hasn't stepped back at all. I mean, he has just been solid, game in, game out. Did you see that team last year at Tamatha with Bogans and Forte? And it was a team that Morgan Wooten just sat back and watched and coached him. Well, I've seen Bogans play at Kentucky a number of times this year. Two outstanding young players. Two minutes, 11 seconds to play in the game. It's 64-61, Carolina. ACC Basketball has been brought to you by Bank of America by Dodge Trucks by Advance Auto Parts by Pepsi by Food Lion by Buick and by Budweiser so, Billy, here we go now, the final two minutes and 11 seconds of this ball game, and you have to be surprised that Georgia Tech is down by three, have really played well, and Carolina just has not been able to pull away. Well, I'm surprised that Moore is on the floor on the offensive end. Bobby Crimmins had a chance to have his offensive team out here with Floyd being that third guy. Moore, a better rebounder. North Carolina goes zone. Well, I tell you, Aikens really turns the ball over with illegal dribbles and gets by with it. Inside the Jones. He just and he's fouled by Capel. Good play from outside by Collier, though. Four on Capel. And let's see if 
Jones has that soft touch he had before. Now here's a case where for some reason you're down inside and you've seen this time and time again with Jones this year. He never finishes the shot. And as strong, as big as he is, he's got to be able to get that ball in the basket and get popped. Makes his free throw, so he's perfect at the line tonight. Short. Still a two-point game. Wow. Got to question that shot. With the lead and the clock in your favor, you can get a better shot than that. A minute and a half to play. Fine from way outside. Maybe beyond his range, Forte rushed him a little bit. Bobby Bremens <laughs> didn't like the shot. Yeah, I shows his frustration. North Carolina going to use some clock now. And remember the last time down, they took the quick outside shot. So Bill Guthrie's obviously got their attention. Carolina by two as we go under a minute. Down to ten on the shot clock. Do they recognize the clock? Coda does, takes it into the paint. Good Tough time. shot. 44 seconds left. Two-point game, and Georgia Tech has the ball. Collier had good position inside. They waited too long to get it to him. Here's Collier. Off balance. Makes the shot. We're tied. Plenty of time on the clock right now. Good job by Collier. He wanted the ball early on that exchange. Shot clock is off. 27 seconds remain. Aiken's picking up Coda way on out. Well, this is dangerous trying to stop Coda this far away from the basket. He ought to back off some. Carolina going for the last shot. Which is wise to do at home. We don't mind going to overtime if that's the worst scenario. Six seconds. Off balance. Overtime. And we're going an extra period. Wow, do you believe this? Give Bobby Crimmins a lot of credit. He's got his team with nothing, no reason to play hard, and they've played very smart and hard tonight. Bobby Kremens in his last game as head coach at Georgia Tech here at Chapel Hill. They're tied at 64. We're going an extra five minutes. What a finish. We'll be back. 64-64 as we go into overtime. Here's the final shot, Billy. Collier doing a fine job. He wanted the ball down low when he got it out here. Pepper's on his shoulder, takes it inside and shoots the floater, which is a very difficult shot for a seven-footer. Now, Cody goes down, gets caught inside. I'm sure he wanted to pass rather than shoot, but Collier does a good job stymieing him here, leaving him with no shot whatsoever. That puts it into overtime. North Carolina has lost their over, only overtime game this year, and that was against Duke right here. And, of course, uh, Georgia Tech may be one of their best games when you take in consideration who it was lost in overtime to Stanford, the nation's number one team. Both teams in a bonus. You see the timeouts remaining. Five minutes to play in the overtime period. Jones stole the tap there. Got it easy. Yellow Jackets have it first. Now, are they going to look for the outside shots or play the clock a little bit? Collier's got that position. Can he finish a shot? The answer is no. No, but Moore gets it back. Only 13 seconds, though, to go on the clock. The ball never hit the rim. No, no, no. I don't think the ball ever hit the rim, did it? He's asking for a reset, isn't he? It's I don't know 10. why. I don't know why. Shot clock at 10. Now the officials will confer. No, the ball never hit the rim. It should be 10 seconds. Now, if you're Georgia Tech, you want a couple more seconds on the clock because the... They, yeah, if I'm Bobby Crimmins, I want 12 seconds on the clock. It never hit the rim. They're going to keep it at 10. They have 10 seconds of work. North Carolina playing the zone. Four from way outside. Wow, that's an unusual shot to take by a guy at that position. Bobby's not happy with it. Well, I think that Crimmins should have argued to put two seconds back on the clock. The official never should have stopped. 
Now the first offensive possession of the overtime for Carolina. Pepper is open. So is Forte. Nice shot. There's what I was talking about earlier, Tim. He can pull up and take the short, medium-range jumper, shoot the perimeter jumper, or take it to the hole. Billy, he's quick, but never in a rush. Nope. Kyle, you're fouled by Forte. Well, the referees have been consistent. They've been calling on the defense all night long down there. Came across, had good piece of the ball, might have got a little bit of the arm. Take a look. Well, I think that's pretty much ball, isn't it? That's what he's saying. Yep. He's not happy with the call. Every trip to the line now becomes critical as Collier makes that. Has not missed at the line tonight. Collier has not gone to the line as much as Jones, but he's made 103 of 138, so he's right up around 75%. And he's 7 for 7 tonight. 8 for 8. And we're tied at 66. He's the number six scorer in the league, number one rebounder in the league. He's got some foul trouble, but North Carolina hasn't tried to get the ball down inside to get him out of there. Forte off balance. Floyd comes up with it. Numbers aren't there, so he wisely brings it back out. They shouldn't be in a rush. They should try to melt the clock while they're on the road. Absolutely shorten up the game. The pressure on the defense. He just cannot finish inside. He had the position. He takes the baby steps. 15 turnovers for Georgia Tech tonight. Bobby Crimmins wanted the call there. Pass to Peppers. Back outside to Coda. Wide open beyond the arc. His shot. That is his shot when he has to stand still one-hander. He now has five points at the three-point game. Now, you can see that Bill Guthrie's won his team to drop back into a tight zone. Now, with these three perimeter shooters on the floor, I don't know if that's a good move. The one they're definitely trying to shut down is Collier. Inside to Jones. Fouled by Haywood, and that's... And now Bobby Crimmins wants an intentional foul, which would be two and the ball. Here you see Coda reluctant to shoot, but he likes to stand still one-hander one and buries it. That's four fouls on Haywood. I, I would say that it was not intentional because Haywood made some attempt to go after the ball. the roll there's the one of the premier guards that's ever played in this league ACC player of the year in 85 took his team to a regional final that particular year but the great pure shooter has worked a lot with the Georgia Tech players from the foul line Bobby's working these referees and he <laughs> see if Jones was distracted He was distracted right into the hoop. Yeah, I'll Excellent tell you, free Mark Price has made a difference if tonight is an indication. Excellent free throw shooting on the big man's part. Georgia Tech stays in the man to man. There's been no attempt to get the ball down in low against Collier to get him out of there. 69 68, Carolina. Tar Heels have the ball. And because of the kick, the 35 seconds will go back up there. Forte is just so confident. And Peppers throws it away. No, they call a foul. Wow, that was some call there. Called it on Jones. That's four on him. We'll see this call. This is really interesting, but they've been consistent all night long. It's always on the defense. Watch this. Here comes Jones, and that foul is called on Jones. Can you believe it? Wow. 
Haywood goes to the line. He's got 12 points. Well, Bobby can't believe it. This is the free throw. Now, what will North Carolina do defensively? They drop back into a zone with the lead. But Georgia Tech has a very good perimeter shooting team on the floor, and with two misses, they've got a chance even with a two here to take the lead. Billy, it's still a one-point Carolina lead, but Georgia Tech with the ball under two minutes to play. Foul on the inside, holding. Peppers holding, yep. And that should be Collier, because that's who he was guarding. And that's three on Peppers. Collier goes to the line, and he hasn't missed there tonight. He has 24 points. Again, let's give credit to the referees in this respect. Whether you like the calls or not, they have been consistent. And that's all you really want out of the officials. Sure. And it's first miss. That's the first time that Collier or Jones haven't kept a hand up there on the follow-through. This is a critical shot here. Makes the second one. We're tied at 69. Nine out of 10 for Collier from the line. Georgia Tech wants a timeout with 158 to play. We're deadlocked. Well, we're tied at 69 with 158 to play in the first overtime period. Take a look at our Pepsi players of the game. Jason Collier, sensational tonight, 25 points, 7 of 13 from the field, 9 of 10 from the free throw line. And how about Julius Peppers, the big guy, 14 points, 6 of 7 from the field, and four big rebounds. Collier's been playing a lot of minutes here with four fouls on him. North Carolina has just left the idea of going down against him and picking up that fifth. Well, you see the time in the lower right-hand corner. That's what's left in the game. I bet you he's played almost 15 minutes for those four fouls. Jones knocks it away, knocks it out of bounds. 21 on the shot clock. You know who's been quiet lately is Floyd. Yeah, he started off. Actually, he's the guy to put Georgia Tech in control of the game early. Capel's going to take that shot and try to throw the foul. He does, and Floyd is called. Bobby Krim is saying to Floyd, just keep your hands up, move your feet, and don't chop. That's three. Look at Lane. Well, North Carolina is in much better shape than is Georgia Tech if uh, they get in any more foul trouble inside because Lane can come back into the ball game. Bobby Crimmins has no size to rotate with these two big men. Capel trying to break the tie. Excellent free throw shooter. Boy, is he ever. He's hit 90 of his 110 coming into this game. Shane Battier, the only guy ahead of him. Four for five tonight. Makes them both. So Carolina pulls out by two with one and a half to play. North Carolina drops back in the zone. Critical possession for Georgia Tech. Fans really into it. Inside to Collier. Nice screen by Collier. Floyd wasn't ready, but wide open. And he gets wide for three. Excellent offensive maneuver by Georgia Tech. Collier setting the screen and the extra pass set up the wide open shot. Yellow Jackets by one as we go under one minute. I'm really surprised North Carolina's playing this Georgia Tech team in a zone. They've got three good perimeter shooters plus Collier. Oh, Forte with a oh. tough shot. How sweet is that? Incredible shot. He is a money player, that kid. And they stay in the zone. 43 seconds left. You got four guys here can shoot the outside shot. Here's one of them. That ball. Carolina basketball. Bobby Crimmins going to call the timeout. Collier a little quick on that shot. 35.6 seconds left. Boy, there have been some big wins for Tech against North Carolina. Bobby Kremen's Yellow Jacket teams have some huge wins. In 89, Dennis Scott stole the inbounds pass and canned a three-pointer in the final seconds. Tech won by two. 93, ACC championship game. James Forrest ran through the top-ranked Tar Heels to lead the Yellow Jackets. 
94. It was Fred Vincent who came off the bench to spark another Tech win over number one ranked North Carolina in 96. Remember Drew Barry? Watch this. He hit nine three-pointers and scored a career-high 30 points in the overtime win. And last season, the Tar Heels' Max Owens had a chance to win it at the buzzer, but it was no good. Tech won by two. Some huge wins by Georgia Tech against North Carolina. As I mentioned, three times in the 90s, Bobby Crimmins has won on this floor. 35.6 seconds left. Carolina with the ball and a one-point lead. North Carolina has lost five times, which is an all-time high on this floor this year. 0.6 seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. Five seconds? Timeout call. call. The time. They got the time before the five-second call. I think it was Coda that called it. Wow. Coda recognizing that Peppers was in serious trouble there, got the timeout. It was awful close. Billy, take a look at the advance auto parts play of the game, and it was Aiken's big three-pointer. This was huge. Well, it really was, and that was well set up by Georgia Tech. And again, with North Carolina playing the zone, and Georgia Tech with three good perimeter shooters, plus Collier making it four, that defense is, uh, is one that could be susceptible to trouble against this Georgia Tech team going down the wire. The one-point difference, Collier missed a free throw, and how unusual that is. He's one of their, well, he is their best free, free throw shooter. North Carolina going to get that ball out again down under the, the basket. Going to send a man long. Haywood, nothing going there. Got the ball to the right man in Coda. Foul is on Floyd. He left his feet. Boy, they had Coda exactly where they wanted him. You know, 10-second clock working against him. No reason to foul back there. That was Floyd jumping up on the air. Losing his feet, losing his balance, and committing the foul. And there you see it. Now, this will be the first time that Coda has gone to the line tonight. Seventy-five percent free throw shooter, but on the year, only 61 attempts. He's made 46 of those. He misses here. Boy, he's just struggled. Well, now you, you have a situation, even if he makes this, and the team that, again, that Georgia Tech has on the floor being a solid perimeter team. they got plenty of time to set up a good shot, no matter what he does with this free throw. Tech's got to get the rebound if he misses, though. And he makes the second one. 74-72, 29 seconds left. Shot clock is off. And they go back into the zone. Look for that solid screen by Collier up front. Coda got away with a push. He sure did get away with a push, and uh, I think Aikens hurt. is hurt. Very fortunate for Cody that he didn't get called for the foul there. That's unbelievable. Right yeah. in front of the official. He has a cramp on the leg the way he came down. He can't move right now, and that really hurts Georgia Tech. That means Vines will have to go in there, takes away one of their premier shooters. If Bobby Crimmins has the timeouts. He ought to try to use them all here. not walking like he's going to be able to come back in this game. I don't know if that it's might a have been a, that Charlie might have been a hyper something. extension. Yeah, it could be. Watch watch the push in the air if we can see it. You see the play. Now watch right here. Yeah, there's no question there's a foul. Yeah, I think he hyper extended his knee. And what a bad break for Georgia Tech because it takes away a premier shooter, puts fines in the game. 13 seconds left to Collier. Fine from way outside. Collier with a good rebound gets pushed. Four seconds. Oh, and Tech throws it away. And boy, what did that injury to Aikens mean? Put Vines on the floor, who did not want to take the outside shot. Aikens, one of the premier outside shooters in the league, not available. Carolina gets the win, but it was not easy. 74-72 over Georgia Tech in overtime.
Georgia Tech goes to 12 and 6, 4 and 11 in the conference. North Carolina goes to 18 and 11, 9 and 6 in the conference. Once again, the final score is 74-72 Carolina. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. So long, everybody, from Chapel Hill.